and Kyle, uh, and you know we'll see them all again in round two, and you know I'm, I'm sure they'll put on a, a better showing. But now welcome to the chair, Jared Houston. How are Thanks, you, Jared? Mate. Yeah, I'm very good. And yourself? Oh, good, mate. Good. It, look, Sweet. Welcome and. Thank you for the show you put on earlier. You, you happy with your first round performance? Yeah, I'm really happy with that. Um, it's great to get a first straight off the bat. So you can kind of relax for the rest of the time and just focus without that uh, added pressure of needing to perform. So it's it's uh, definitely a good feeling. That's great. We saw at the start of the competition, uh, Craig Haddon, the head judge, briefing the riders on what they were looking for. Um, what role did that play in your strategy? Did it change the way you went about it? Or talk us through it. Yeah, definitely. Um, that was definitely very helpful. Oh, here we have Ben Play up on this wave. Getting a nice little barrel, not such a clean exit, but um, opening his campaign over there. But uh, yeah, what I was saying was just that um, right before we got debriefed, and here we have Blue. The rider in blue is the local man, Ariam Cabrera. Okay. Look, here comes a section. Oh, yeah. yeah. On that dry left hand end ball. Kind of a, a no man's land. You don't really want to end up there too often. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, yeah, to talk about the Craig Haddon briefing the. Uh, the riders and how th that affected the way you approached the heat? Yeah, well, uh, yeah, he debriefed us just before we went in and he s explained um, what he was looking for. And he one point that really stood out to me was that he said he was looking for air reverse and air forwards. And um, out of front time, that's a pretty pretty good move to do with the variation of the sections that get thrown at you out there. And uh, when that wave came through, I just knew that that's what I had to do. And um, and I just, yeah, I just went for it and I was happy that the wave kicked me back into the flats. Sometimes here you have a tendency to go off the back, but yeah, I was able to ta time that one well and it um, it paid off for me, so I was stoked. Yeah, no, that's great. Looks like we've got Magno Oliveira up and riding. Oh, be good. He rolls through that, Jerry. That's yeah. pretty hard to do on the left when it gets all funky like that. Yeah, that is, that is a good good opening wave for Magno. Um, I'll definitely get a, a decent score. Something nice for him to open up his heat with. Uh, Magno's had a had a crack over here on the on the tour. Um, I think he's actually in the top five or six at the moment. Yeah, and, and I uh, think as, you have a look as per usual, he's the silent the silent winner, and um, he's definitely one to look out for in this event. Yeah, look, he's currently sitting in in seventh position. In seventh, he's one okay. of those riders who uh, is you know, he's safe. He's qualified for next year, but I'm sure he'd like to finish the year with a with a strong finish and. Uh, maybe talk about your approach towards... Oh, let's talk about Magno first. You, yeah. you faced him in Puerto Rico, is that right, Jerry? Sorry? Did you face Magno in yes, the I Puerto did Rican actually, contest? Um, yeah, I was <laughs> yeah he, he got the better of me there in Puerto Rico. Um, just chose a really good heat strategy. Uh, he's a very experienced competitor. And um, he, yeah, he, he got me in a priority situation, which I couldn't get out of. And um, yeah, just a few bad decisions on my behalf and um, some smart surfing from Magno and he, he, he went on to place third in that event. So it's a great result for him and that uh, that put him back up into the top 10. Yeah, and that looked been very strong. He, you know, we, we saw him in the box event come second to Hardy and he's had a very strong year and he's earned a lot of respect. Uh, yeah. Wasn't very well known before this year, but really you know, forced for sure. himself into the top 10 in the world. and. Exactly, yeah. No, no, he's, um, he's, he's great. And it's also, he's a really great ambassador for Brazil. Um, he's a... All the guys there behind him get they get they get behind him there, yeah. And and, um, and he's he's a very stylish rider as well. He's got a very so solid style, and uh, he kind of breaks the the mold set set by Brazilian by the Brazilian riders. And uh, it's it's great to see. Like, got a lot of respect for Mags, and he and he he's, he's a ripper. Yeah, no, most definitely. And uh, the exciting news is we're looking at taking the World Tour to Brazil next year, and look yeah. out for an announcement shortly about that. But. Uh, and I'm sure guys like GT and Tomega and you know, even guys like Roberto Bruno who have qualified for next year's World Tour will be quite excited. But have a look at this, oh. Jerry. Who's that? Jeez, that's, uh, I don't know, I think that's Big Jez getting amongst it out there. That was, that was a 9.25. That yeah. was the highest score of, of the contest so far. You uh, you talked us through it earlier, but oh. someone else has just thrown the mantle down to you then. Who yeah, was that? Yeah, they had Mags having a go there. Um, unfortunately getting, oh, whoa, Ben, jeez, wow. Okay, well, that was a pretty crazy exchange. Um. As you can see, like in when the wave really comes together, it makes a really pretty big ramp. But because of the shape of the reef, the waves come in at both angles at really um, with a lot of force, and uh, it's incredibly hard to land a move yeah. if you're hitting it in the main section. Well, talk, can you talk us through this wave? This is the 9.25. Yeah, let me have a look here. Okay, well, um, yeah, that wave. I was just pretty much just thinking that um, exactly what Craig had and said that he was really looking for air reverses. And I'm, geez, I'm pretty happy with that. Yeah, um, very clean. Yeah, and that, that wave just came through and it lined up perfectly. It had a nice little bit of swing 
of west in the end of it, which is the swell direction you want here. And it just uh, gave me that little bit of kick to get back into into the into the flats. Yeah, that's one thing I've noticed with I said on the rights, especially you've seen the riders a lot of them doing big moves at falling off the back, and, and yeah. it is a very tricky wave to master. You've done a lot of time here. I'm sure that helps, but yeah, um, yeah. does it change the way you you approach the wave, or is it really just whatever the wave delivers you at the time? Yeah, definitely, it definitely changed the way I approach the wave. Um, I, I feel very comfortable out there, and I um, I've, I'm just putting in a few hours here, and I've got a couple of local friends that really help me out with where to sit and which wave to take, and it's uh, that's definitely an advantage. And um, in that heat, I just I knew exactly which waves would offer high scoring potential, and I did my best to wait. And I actually waited 10 minutes before I took my first wave, which the one I actually took was, it didn't go the way I planned. But um, from there, I was able to, to bounce back and get a few more good scores. So it's, uh, yeah, it's having spent a lot of time here, definitely it gives me an advantage out there. Here we have the score update, and it said, f only five minutes into the heat, but Magno's jumped out to a start with a, in an 8.25 for his two waves, and uh, he's started strongly. Mitch Rollins yet to get a wave at the other end of the spectrum, yeah. but at the moment, Ben Player from Australia in second, Ariam Cabrera, the local man, he's in third, and Mitch Rollins, as he said, yet to catch a wave. But similar to you, it took you 10 minutes to catch your first wave. Yeah, ex you exactly. Yeah. I've, I've actually been watching Mitch the last few days. He's been out here surfing, and... Um, He's a pretty calculated uh, free surfer as well as a competitor, and he 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 knows exactly which waves produce the highest scores here, and that's exactly what he's doing now. He's just he's holding his priority, and he's just waiting for his uh, time to strike. So I definitely I don't think he's too phased at the moment. He's just uh, he's just waiting for his for his perf his perfect wave to come through. Yeah, look, and it's great to see Mitch. He qualified through the GQS, so we'll see a lot more of Mitch Rollins next year in yeah. the, in the top 24 and. Uh, and you know yourself as well. You know, at the moment you're sitting in tenth position. I'm sure you'd want to better that yeah. at this event. But you know, top ten, you'd be happy with that. Um, yeah, I'd, I would be relatively happy with that. I definitely want to better that result. Uh, I finished tenth last year, so I'd feel kind of bad finishing in the same position. So, um, so I'm definitely keen to go and uh, improve on that result. And uh, this is what I plan to achieve in this contest. Well, look, Jerry. Looking at the scenarios here, if you if you take this one out, you can jump into the top three. So, okay. Um, yeah, maybe that's your goal. Yeah, that's some very good news, and uh, that definitely is my goal, and that's what I'll be, that's what we're going for. But uh, heat by heat and wave by wave, and I'm just loving the fact of getting to compete out here at front on such a great wave. Stony exiting the water is it's actually his first time surfing front on, I think. Wow. And uh, I think he got second in that heat. He did. He did yeah. well. Uh, it was a quite a slow heat, but he got through with the second. Okay. And uh, yeah. if it's his first time surfing, it, it's not a bad start. Yeah. And, um, I'm sure he'll build as the contest builds. And oh, for sure. No. Yeah. He's he's one of the best. He's one of the best riders in the world, and uh, he's had a he's also had a great late year. And uh, I guess he's looking for a good result here too. We got Benny. Oh. It was a really sick Lip backflip, and yeah, he just wasn't able to hold on to that. A little bit late, but just talking about Jake, and, and we've got Pierre and yourself, all very similar in age, all around the age of 21, starting to build up quite a rivalry in the new generation. Can you talk about that dynamic and the relationship you have with those other two yeah, guys? Um, yeah, I have a pretty good relationship with those two guys, uh, especially with Pierre. Um, me and Pierre get on pretty well, and uh, I've got a lot of respect for Pierre. Like, as I've said before, he's, he's probably my favourite rider, and um, he's the one I draw the most inspiration from. He's just just such a fiery competitor and, um, and a really great free surfer as well. And he's just got such a mature outlook for such a young rider. And uh, Jake as well. Jake's, geez, the last year he's been blowing up. Uh, the footage I've seen of him is incredible and uh, such a character. And uh, they've all, yeah, both of them are just incredible riders. And uh, I think within the next few years that this young group will start to move into the front. Um, well, I guess, I guess the older guys wouldn't like me saying that, but... Um, it's just, I guess, just the natural progression curve, and um, yeah, I think it's, I think it's sick that there's, I mean, in the in the in the Pierpol now there were three riders in the top ten that were like around the age of 21, and the same now as in top ten of the world too. I think Jake's 11th, I'm 10th, and um, and Pierre's in second. second at the moment. So we could even have a a 21 year old world champ come event end. Yeah, that's amazing, isn't it? And uh, it's just been how open the world title race has been this year. Isn't yeah. It? Prior to Puerto Rico, there were still 12 people in contention in all these different scenarios. Now there's four, but uh, Pierre took his opportunity, and you know he's really got a bit of momentum up at the moment. We've seen him obviously win Puerto Rico. He went to Azores, yeah, probably just for a bit of fun and giggles, and he took yeah. that one out. He won the ISA Games last week. He's got all the momentum. You'd be nervous if you were Jeff Hubbard. I know you really would be. Yeah. I think I think Jeff's definitely sweating a few there, but uh, Jeff's 
on the other end of the scale, he's the he's he's got the experience over here, and he's uh, he's one of the most calculated and uh, professional competitors around, and uh, he he knows exactly what he has to achieve in this event, and I think that he's gonna. I think that he's going to give uh, everything he has to achieve that. Yeah, definitely be exciting. While we've got a little break in the action, let's throw out to the ad advertisements of one of our sponsors. There we go, amazing, amazing ad from uh, from Grand Flavor. But look, you're part of the Grand Flavor team, Jerry. Yeah. They've been decking us out, but are you happy with the new threads? Oh, I'm loving the new threads. Uh, the new summer range is looking absolutely tip top, and uh, the winter range is great as well. It's actually, I've been rocking out a bit of the winter range here with it being a bit cold. But um, yeah, the the new summer range, you can see me and yourself are yeah, both rocking it out, and um, yeah, it's it's great. And you can get that all via GrandFlavor.com, which uh, which is very easy for you to see right here on my shirt. Yeah, there you go. And I said, if you just jump on to grandflavor.com, exactly as uh, Jared explained, uh, you can see the full range there and you know, get your goodies before Christmas. But a uh, big shout out to Grand Flavor for supporting the media aspect of this event. And then we've also had great support from the other major industry players in NMD, Pride and Stealth, who have uh, provided financial backing to this event. And, uh, uh, you know, it's great to see. And, and I, was, I think, Jerry, for yourself, seeing uh, the industry backing in events and the two are growing like it is, it must be exciting times. Oh, no, I'm so stoked on the fact that the industry is getting behind the events. And the beginning of the year, it wasn't so. And um, and now they're really, almost every event's being sponsored by someone from the industry. And that's that's great because uh, we have to all stick together and um, bodyboarding is what we make of it. And, uh, yeah, it's, it's, I'm, I'm super stoked to, to be involved with such a great team and such a great group of guys. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, no, look, no, definitely. And there you've got Shaggy. He's modelling the range. Yeah. He's a character. What Jeez do you think? So he's got the hat and the all shirt. All the and boys he's got the shorts. <laughs> Yeah, take a look at Shaggy and that. All the, all the stuff on the new summer range, The any range available is uh, actually Grand Flavor's got a big promo on at the moment uh, where you can, um, it's offering, offering free shipping on international orders over $200, wow. which is an absolute steal. So all you international viewers should definitely get on there and uh, get buying. The offer ends at the end of the contest. Well, that's good. I didn't know that, Jared, so thanks for pulling that to our attention. But, yeah, Shaggy, a real character, South African. And, uh, but you yeah. saw the school update there. A little bit nice. of a slow heat, but Ariam Cabrera uh, from Canary Islands is out in front. So, uh, it's, you know, still plenty of time to go. And Magno, with a bit of frustration, paddles back out. And But I'll tell you what, Jared, the... You had pretty good waves for your condition for your heat, and you'd have to be happy with the way that went down. They seem to deteriorate a little bit now, with you know just one more heat remaining today. But the exciting thing is the forecast. Check this out. Jeez. The yeah, next few days, uh, it looks like the winds will improve for tomorrow and be about the same size as this morning, which is exciting. But then uh, you know, we might have a couple of lay days, but then we push out to early next week, and look at that, eight Jeez, feet, uh, eight, yeah. and that. Look, you speak to some of the locals, they're actually talking bigger than eight feet. Yeah, no, no, they're looking, it's like, everyone's telling me it's going to be massive. Um, the period is huge, it's like 16 or 18 seconds. And we and they've got a massive tide as well predicted for us. So everything's like combining to make it as big as it possibly can be. But um, luck is on our side because because the swell is a bit out of the north. It's a very north-northwest swell. So it will all come in, so it's going to be as big as it can be. But luckily we've got the big tide. So the left should be holding up a bit more because when it has that north swing in it, it tends to make that really gnarly end ball. So um, yeah, for all the viewers, it's going to be <laughs> it's going to be a great show. Um, I'm not too sure which side of the lens I'd rather be on for this actually. <laughs> so uh, so yeah, let's let's see what happens. Yeah, look, it'll be an amazing finish to what's been an amazing year if we can have the world champion crowned in you know eight feet, ten feet. Yeah. Right on, it would just be something special and. Oh. Uh, Look, I'm, you know, I'm sure you want to be in the mix there and, uh, you know, keep pushing through. And But I think everybody who's involved in this contest now just wants to get to that final day and be a part of what's going to be history. Exactly, exactly. And I think for all the riders that are pushing for that world title, uh, that world title win, they, they're just so pumped to be competing at front on and uh, having the opportunity to win it, possibly the best body winning wave in the world. There's been a lot of debate about that at the moment on the forums, but um, I, I think for sure that 
no other wave really comes close and uh, it's such a high performance wave it's it's got barrels it's got air walls it's got uh it's got danger it's got uh accessibility everything comes together and uh oh i know i know personally that pierre is um is just so keen to win here because it's his favorite wave in the world and uh he wants to he wants to end off with a bang yeah, he's up against some susan campaigners we've got guys like jeff hubbard Delamo Tomega and Ryan Hardy. It's, it's going to be it's going to be exciting to watch. Oh. But look at this, 15 minutes to go, Jerry. It's uh, you know only very slow. Heat. 10 minutes gone. Mitch Rollins still yet to catch a wave. Wow. Okay. Magna uh, kicking out of that one. But yeah, Mitch. Jeez, I I think that he's still playing the same strategy, but uh, I can't really say whether he's still feeling good. Although here yeah, we have Mitch Rollins up on his first wave, but nah. In that case, the wave didn't pay off for him. Yeah, and that, um, that makes it even more frustrating, doesn't it? Yeah. When you sit there with priority for 15 minutes. Exactly, and then, and then take a bad comes. one. But here we have the heat leader, Aram Cabrera, up and riding. A uh, nice invert there, and right in the heavy section. And he's, yeah, he, he rode out of that one. So another good wave from Aram there. Um, he's, a, he's a local Canary Islands competitor. I've uh, been on the scene for a number of years. Got his own board company. Great supporter of the local scene. And, uh, yeah, he's... He's a, um, a very dominant competitor, and he's one to watch out for in this event for sure. And no relation to Diego Cabrera. No, nah, no relation. Uh, I also thought for sh I also thought he's his brother. They don't look anything alike, but um, I thought maybe like some, I don't know, some kind <laughs> of family thing. But uh, yeah, no, it, they're not related at all. Okay. Yeah. Look, we've seen the locals have been a force already. We saw the first heat of the day. Elliot Morales came out and did his thing. Then we saw Galame Galame go Cobo. Uh, he he did it as well. Yeah. And yeah, Ariam Cabrera, he's ahead now in this heat. Next heat, we've got two of the, you know, the probably the highest profile two, locals, yeah. Uri Martinez and Nelson Mora. That'll be exciting to watch. Yeah, no, no I think I think Nelson's super amped to get in the water here. Uh, he's a, he's been a long a long standing local, and uh, he's, he's 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 pretty young, and he's actually ridden he actually rode arguably the biggest wave of France on ever, um, in uh, in 2009, and um, and yeah, he's looking to make a big statement here and uh, have some fun competing at home break. Yeah, most yeah. definitely. And look, you've made yourself a, a good group of local friends. Do you want to give a shout out to the locals here? Yeah, for sure. So like, um, yeah, all, all the boys. And uh, it's been great just hanging out here. Back with all the friends from last year. They had they showed me such a good time last year. And um, definitely made some lifelong friends here. So it's it's epic to be back in the Canary Islands. And a big shout out to Ali Barbosa for having me at his house again. It's um, such a meta place. And yeah, I'm just, I'm just loving hanging out here. The, everything, the whole atmosphere, the... Uh, the waves, the people, the the parties, the landscape, everything. Here we got Mitch. Ah, having a look at that one, but it's just because of the wind. I think the swell is mixing in. There's a bit of west coming in. There's a bit of north, and um, it's just so hard to pick the waves. Got Benny P up. Sick reverse. Will he ride out but of that? Yeah, I, I doubted oh, it. Caught Jeez, in the bubble, wow. but he landed. It just got caught up, and unfortunately didn't ride out. But yeah. uh, for Ben Player, but. Look, another interesting, I'll be interested in your thoughts, Jared, you would have seen the race for the Global Qualifying Series, the GQS, go down yeah. this morning. You, I guess you're friends with two of the people who were fighting it out. You had yeah. the, the countryman, Adam Morley. Unfortunately, he finished ninth, yeah. just bowed out. Man. Another friend of yours, Andrew Lester, was the one who jumped over him. Yeah. Talk me through that. Did you speak to them afterwards? Yeah, or? no, it was, it, was, it was pretty crazy. I was, like, I was actually thinking before the event, this is just as exciting as the as the world title showdown and um yeah adam i felt really bad for him he's he's such a good such a great rider and um, we've grown up competing together in south africa and um he he, had, he actually used to beat me all the time when, I, when we were younger and uh, I, I reckon if he's had to have a good crack he's, he's still, he still would and um so i was really gutted to see him not qualify just get pushed out at the last minute but i mean wow andrew lester what a great job yeah came came from relative retirement a year or two ago to making such a presence in the Australian scene this year and now he's taken his act international and um, now he's qualified for the GQ, I mean the GSS. Yeah, so it's, it's going to be amazing to watch Leicester <laughs> take on the world's best uh, next year and as you said, it's it's, you know, it's been such an exciting year and I said it, it, that's one of the fairy tales of, of the story. It said, you know, Andrew Lester basically hadn't walked away from bodyboarding enough for a couple of years and um, just took a break. He, like, he'd been at the top of the sport for a good 10 years yeah you know, he came second in the world title he also won pipeline so he, he'd sort of done a lot in the sport a little bit jaded uh he walked away but we've got ben player looking at one here Jerry. yeah ben uh ben what's he got here oh sick little backy 
That was pretty pretty clean. Um, pretty clean exit on that one, and uh, that's a nice nice score for Ben. Uh, he's currently in second in this heat. Um, we don't have scores right now, but uh, but yeah, that's definitely another an, an improvement for Ben. Yeah. And um, he's definitely looking for a win in this one, so he can get a a good nice rest tonight. Yeah, no, definitely. Uh, ben again, a guy who's been around a long time, two-time world champion, and uh, but he's still got the hunger and drive. To yeah. He wants another one, and. Uh, you know, he was right in contention there until he you know, didn't get such a great result at Reunion Island, which sort of ended his title race. But, uh, yeah, no, look, but, you know, Ben will be back next year, and I know he's very focused. For sure. Uh, that, but look at that. He's the man of the moment, Ryan Hardy. Ryan Hardy entering, yeah. Ryan Hardy's um, up for his uh, maiden world title, even though he's long been considered the best rider in the world, the most stylish rider in the world. Um, kids these days are still following his... His precedent for style, and uh, that means he's still at the top of the game. And um, yeah, like uh, I think, I think there's, I don't think anyone can say they wouldn't like to see him win. He definitely deserves it. It'd be the real um, top trophy in his mantelpiece. And uh, he's he's won everything there is to win, and now he's just looking for that last title. Yeah, yeah. Now he's done it all. But before we go to there, let's have a chat to Shaggy, our uh, Grand Flavor model, and he's got the last heat win with him now. Over to you, Shaggy. Hey guys, I'm down here with Dave Winchester, the winner of the last heat. Congratulations, Winnie. Tough heat out there, wasn't it? Yeah, the conditions were pretty hard. It was a bit of a slow start, but managed to get a couple of average ones and get on top. You had, um, you had a few good waves yesterday, hey, when, the, when the, having the trials? Yeah, it was a bit of fun yesterday. The, the wind was kind of strong early, then it backed off. kind of does that a bit here, and so it was good to um, get a few free surf waves in before the comp today. Nice, and uh, so this is your second time or third time in Canary Islands now? I don't know, maybe fourth or fifth. Jeez, a seasoned veteran, some might say. <laughs> so what, you like coming here? Yeah, we love it. Fronton's one of the best waves around in the world, so, I mean, hopefully we get some really good conditions and show everyone how good it is. You seen the forecast recently? Yeah, it looks pretty good. Just hopefully that wind holds off, and if that wind holds off, we should get a, get a good, great, great contest, I guess. A bit of devil wind, hey? So, well, you've uh, won your round one. Uh, congratulations, six points in the bag. Little shout-out back to Australia. Yeah, thanks to my mum and Brian for babysitting, giving Aim a break. <laughs> Legends. See you guys. Back up to you. Shaggy and yeah, Dave Winchester, another guy from the Grand Flavor team. Yeah. Uh, who have we got in the Grand Flavor team? Can you taught me uh, Yeah, we've got, uh, we got um, Ben Player and Dave Winchester, Chad Jackson, who were actually the founding members and are still team riders to this day. And then um, rounding up the younger guys, we've got myself, Cade Sharp. Yeah, and no, uh, let's quickly really just switch to this replay now of uh, Mitch Rawlins. Yeah, look, Mitch Rawlins said he's been the form surfer in the free surfing. Looking for a wave here. Look, he's yeah, no, nah, he's uh, he's he's fully gutted. Um, I think he's really he was really looking forward to competing in like really good front on, and uh, obviously today is not leaves much to be desired. But I mean, uh, this is this is the world tour, and um, the competitor has to compete in all conditions. And M Mitch knows that as well as anyone, and uh, I guess he's just having just blowing off some steam on that wave. Yeah, look, it's frustration. Still seven minutes to go, and. Yeah. If he needs a 6.85 to jump into second, he's very capable of that. Very attainable so score for Mitch. But here we have Ben, currently sitting in third, looking to improve his score. And, whoa, really sick backy. Fighting his way through that. that I think that would be a very good score for Ben. Um, he needed a 4.56 to go to second and a 5.45 to go first. Um, that could just do it for Ben. Yeah, really. look, it'll be close. It's been a pretty slow hoop. If you look at this replay again, it's a little ramp, but it's all about timing and execution. Yeah. And look wow, at that! Oh, timed per perfectly, and he landed right in the in the front of that that same wave, which is what the judges are really looking for. It's a pretty hard thing to do at front time because the with the uh, way the reef is shaped, the wave kind of pushes off to the side. So it's really technical to uh, do a maneuver and still land in front of the same peak that you completed the maneuver on. So uh, yeah, and Ben Player did it. He got a 5.5. Into first place, but he's up and right, you've got Ariam Cabrera. He's going to fight straight back. Yeah. He needs a 4.21 to jump wow. back into first. Okay. Let's see what the judges yeah. say. But it was uh, a pretty strong wave. Uh, had had a size in it and a uh, good clean roll through the lip. Good exit. So um, yeah, let's see. Let's see what happens. <laughs> Might be a case of a seesaw here. Yeah. Look, still five minutes ago, the action's starting to heat up a little bit, but now we have Magno taking off on the left. 
Magnus, he got for us. Uh, he's looking for that section. Nice clean roll. Not a, n not a bad way for Magno, but I, I don't think that's going to be what he needs. Um, he's definitely looking for something a bit more. The judges are being pretty strict today with front time being what it is. And uh, I think he's got to step it up into some more complex maneuvers. He wants to get the, the score he needs. But here we have Mitch having a look here. It's looking good so far. Oh, just could not time that one perfectly. I dare say that now he's really having a now he's having a go out there. He's yelling, you yeah. can see him yelling. He Mitch again, is, um, he's been. Everyone's talking about the who's been the form free surfer, and a lot of people are talking about Mitch Rule and the yeah. other front on the last few weeks, or well, last week or so yeah. since he's arrived. And a lot of people had big expectations. I'm sure he did as well. Yeah, Mitch. Mitch has got out of anyone that I know. I think Mitch has got the highest expectations of himself. And, and rightly so, he's uh, he's just actually won the peer poll and he's he's one of the best riders in the world and uh, and he he knows what he's capable of and when he underperforms or when he thinks he underperforms he he really gets pretty bummed and uh, but here we have his adversary Ben Player with a uh, oh, trying to trying to cash in that reverse thing as well but uh, unfortunately that one didn't pay off for Benny uh, yeah. he's just uh, just not able to project onto the flat. Yeah, and no, he, he said you need to, uh, with that weird angle, you need to get the projection. But you've seen Ben Player there. He's currently in second place. Uh, yeah. One of the legends of the sport. Two-time world For champion. Sure. And, uh, yeah, yeah no, give Ben's me your a, perspective on Ben's ben. a massive inspiration of mine. Uh, he's such a such a passionate competitor. Um, he's one of the most aggressive riders in the water. Uh, he serves with such power and such fluidity that um, I just love to watch him surf, especially our waves like this at Fronton or Black Rock in Australia. Any any high performance waves, but the the really great thing about Ben and his riding is that he he makes bodybuilding look good in any kind of waves. Um, he's he's just got such like strength in his backlift and his reverses, he's got the fastest rotations, and he's 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 a he's a master in my in my opinion. And um, I'd love to see him go well in this event. Yeah, no, most definitely. And at the moment, he's currently sitting in second place. Yeah. That last wave of Diego uh, Ariam Ar Cabrera, Ar Ar sorry, Ariam Cabrera. Uh, was enough to put him back into first place. Yeah. Uh, and Ben's currently, he's in second place. Second he only place. needs 3.85 yeah. to jump into first. And so he just needs a wave, basically. Yeah, that's nothing for Ben. Um, if he just catches any wave, he'll be able to be able to better his second score. Uh, and third, we've got Magno Oliveira from Brazil. He doesn't need much either. He just needs a 4.46 to be second or a 4.61 to be first. So that's extremely in attainable for Mags. And uh, rounding up, Fourth is uh, Mitch Rawlins, and um, he needs to get busy. Yeah, but uh, no, look, yeah, most definitely. But look, it's anything can happen. Still two and a half minutes to go. Mitch Rawlins, they need the seven point one to jump in. So he's very frustrated, not having the great heat. But as I said, let's see what he can do because he get, uh, gets a set wave and he does you know, big, big boost on that. I, I'm, I imagine he's probably got priority out there. Um, you know, he, he yeah. can still do that, but nothing coming his way at the moment. Jared, but yeah, if Mitch just gets the wave he's waiting for, um, the other competitors are going to have a problem. But uh, for now, it's looking like everything's going Aram Cabrera and Ben Player's way. And that's uh, that's that's sick, yeah. Aram's, Aram's killing it. And um, he's making the most of a bad heat here. The bad yeah. heat waves-wise. Not yeah, uh, the guys are all having a digits. crack. And so, uh, but uh, you know, it's a, what we'll do today, we'll see this is the second last heat of the day. We've got Magno here trying to get a 4.46 yeah. to jump into second. Oof, I don't know if this one's going to shape up for him. Nice clean roll, very controlled, but it's a small wave, and it's just, uh, it's just, I just don't think it'll be enough to get that uh, 4.46 to move into second. Yeah, no, I don't think so. You can see the frustration too, but yeah, Jared, this will be the second last heat of the day. We come into heat eight. We'll have many Vargas and Pierre come in into into the country booth, but looks everyone needs to just check in tomorrow because. Forecast is looking similar tomorrow, but the bit winds are looking a little bit better. So, yeah. riders and viewers will be checking in at 7:30 local time to see, you know, what's on offer, and uh, we they could very well go into round two, Jerry. Yeah, perfect. No, I'm, I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready when you guys are, and um, just super keen to compete. So, the earlier the better. All right, Jared. Well, thank you for your time. We really do appreciate. It. Do you want to have a shout out to anyone before you? Yeah, leave? yeah. Just, uh, just a shout out to my family and friends that are watching. Uh, thanks to all my sponsors, Turbo Grand Flavor, Emerald, Deluxe Spins, and Zion West for putting me on here and uh, giving me the opportunity. And uh, big shout out to Natasha and uh, all the dogs at home. Now you guys are watching, so uh, yeah, miss you guys and see you soon. Excellent. Thank you, cool. Jared. And uh, yeah, no, look at. So we're down now, counting down to 40 seconds in this heat. 
and uh, no situation has not changed. Ariam Cabrera in first, Ben Player in second, needing a 3.85. In third, Magna Oliveira needs a 4.46 to jump through. And then we have Mitch Rawlins. But here's Mitch Rawlins now. He only needs a 6.95 to jump into second. And look, he's just having the most frustrating heat he could probably ever imagine. And uh, he boosts off that one. Does he land it? He gets caught up in... I guess that just summarises his heat. I hate to see what he's going to do to his ball. He's still yelling and screaming. and uh, Yelling and screaming? Oh, that's not good. So Mitch, unfortunately, gonna, looks like he's going to finish fourth in that heat. And uh, it just the frustration grew. He took 15 minutes to get to his first wave. Oh, my. Ben Players missed the buzzer. But, yeah, Mitch Rawlins, believe it or not, has finished fourth in that heat. So first place, Ariam Cabrera from Canary Island. Second place, Ben Player from Australia. Third place, Magno Oliveira from Brazil. And then, believe it or not, Manny, welcome back. Wow. Mitch Rawlins, fourth place in Heat 7. Insane. I, I was upstairs talking to a bunch of the guys, but uh, unfortunately I didn't see much of this heat go down, but wow, look at that. Aram Cabrera, the local rider, taking that heat, and here we go. The last heat of the day, round number one here at the IBA 2011. And MD Pride Stealth Fronton Pro. Here, here's another. Here's another look at Mitch Rollins, and uh, he comes off the bottom, and then perfect timing right there. Big invert, and lands out in front of the whitewash. But you, it's really difficult to pull off these maneuvers as the waves coming together, because that lot of whitewash is moving around. So Magno and the rest of the guys coming in, check it out.